Um, I think for me, like it's been really interesting being involved in Sirula and um, yeah, I've just really learned so much since I've been there about education, open education, um, dealing with, with teachers and, and their sort of um, struggles that they also have to deal with every day with um, depending whether it's from the learners who they have to get through school or the um, the resources that they have to deal with and um, and then yeah also just being involved in what we do at Sevula and and seeing the the impact that that's had on teachers and learners in South Africa and but for me I think. Uh, at Sierra really, yeah, we've just been really involved in the actual production side and just getting getting things out there that we've been so focused on, um, on just yeah making these resources available, producing new books that we haven't actually had a chance to to take a step back and sort of assess where this fits in to the greater sort of context of open educational resources. Um, and get an idea of the impact that this is actually having in South Africa um, and yeah so when I, I found out about the fellowship I thought it would be a really great opportunity for us to actually have a, a sort of structured way of of just assessing how people um, sort of perceive our, our resources how they're using them whether it has had any impact um, on teachers and, and education in South Africa and yeah so I think I think anything that we can and can actually learn about what teachers and actually think about our resources and, and how they're using them will help influence and also feed back into our processes at Siavula and also be good for us to actually also showcase um, to other organizations in South Africa to potential sponsors um, and the international community um, in a more formal way with evidence to back it up on, on what we're actually doing because I, I do feel that the work we're doing is um, just does have such huge potential and we need to, to get it out there but we also need to to have the evidence to support a lot of the claims that, that we would like to, to make about, what the, about the work that we do. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, we've got so many different sort of learning contexts in South Africa and um, we're based in the in the Western Cape in in Cape Town and the, that's also one of the provinces that has um, sort of the best education in South Africa at the moment and, and often does um, does what does really well whereas the Eastern Cape is, is very rural and um, and they have a, have a lot of problems with access to resources um, even just um, basic facilities and schools um, teachers that are underqualified and yeah so I think our resources could could have a huge impact there just providing them with just with the actual content and yeah so one of the sort of case studies that I'm want that I'm well, doing as part of the research here is to actually look at a group in the Eastern Cape who've taken our, our grade four to six books and um, translated them into Isitkoso, which is one of the um, local well, indigenous languages in South Africa. And the reason why this is really interesting to me is that um, the grade four to six books that we produced, we've made available in English and Afrikaans. And Afrikaans is one of the other languages in South Africa, which about 20% of the country speaks. But um, up in, from grade one to grade three, most learners um, do mother tongue instruction. And in South Africa, we have 11 official languages. And then in grade four, most learners switch to uh, either English or Afrikaans to continue with the, the education. But um, the problem is in, in rural areas is that from up until grade three, they've had no prior exposure to English. And now suddenly in grade four, they have to switch to English, plus also um, learn a new subject such as science in English. So it's, it's just a huge um, learning barrier to them. And what we found out is that some um, this group in the Eastern Cape has actually decided to, um, to stick with um, Isitosa up until grade six. 
So just to give learners that um, bit more time to actually become familiar with the, the new content in their own language before switching, um, switching to English for, for high school. But obviously they don't then have any resources because most, most publishing houses only produce content in English and Afrikaans. So um, we found out then that they had actually taken our grade four to six books because they're under a CC BY license and, and translates them into Isi Tosa. So um, yeah, I'm really hoping to, to actually um, we'll connect with these people and just find out more about their process, um, how, they've, how they've done it, first from the, the technical side and um, why they've done it and, and if they've um, actually started using these resources in their schools and, and whether it's, they think it's going to have any impact on their, their learners and their teachers. And yeah, and also if there's any way that, that we at Sevilla can facilitate such a process, um, especially from the translation side, we do have um, um, experience in translation now as we do translate our books into Afrikaans using a tool called Transifix and whether other people would benefit from this, whether we could run workshops and yeah, just helping um, our content to be more accessible to these, these kinds of projects because um, I think I think if, if we made it easier for people to do things like this, um, it would happen more and more in South Africa. And especially because we have so many different languages, it would be great if we could con could translate all our content into, into the other languages. Yeah.